Hey everyone, welcome to this guide on building and upgrading cars in Forza Horizon 5. First, we'll talk about the class system and what your goals should be when upgrading, and then we'll dive into what upgrade parts you should be prioritizing and for what reasons. This video is a sort of precursor to my Horizon 5 tuning guide. I'll be mentioning upgrades in this video that only really have an effect once they're properly tuned, so if you need help with that, check out my tuning guide after watching this. Now, first things first for this video, we need to cover the class system. Your car's class is the letter right here, and the number next to it is your performance index, or PI. As you upgrade your car, your PI goes up, and it could bump you into a higher class. Here are all the classes with their corresponding PI ranges. So why does this matter and what does it mean? Well, in single player, it doesn't actually mean that much, because almost all single player content level scales around your car's current PI. If you want to complete all the races in the game using only D-class vintage cars, you absolutely can, and it won't be any more or less difficult than if you had done it all in X-class hypercars, albeit maybe a bit slower. But the point is, in single player, you have full freedom to build whatever and however you want because the AI will always match you. So the goal is to build cars that are fun to drive. Don't worry about min-maxing and meta-tunes in single player, just drive what you enjoy. However, from multiplayer, we have to build around the class system. Just about all multiplayer content is divided by class. This means that an S1 class car will never compete against a car outside of S1 class in any online events, be it Horizon Tour or Open or the Weekly Trial. You always have to follow the class restriction set by the event. This also means that you're putting yourself at a huge disadvantage if you aren't maximizing your PI within the class you're competing in. For any build you plan to take online, you always want to make sure your PI is at the maximum value within a class. It's not about maxing the car out itself, it's all about finding the right class for the car and maximizing it within that class. As a general rule, most cars start to struggle if they're upgraded more than two classes over their stock one. There are exceptions to that, but just keep in mind that your C-Class Ford Escort that you upgraded into S1 might not actually be able to keep up with other S1 cars that started in A or S1 already. So, that's the basics of the class system. Now, what parts do you upgrade to get to the top of your class on your limited PI budget? Let's start with conversions. A lot of builds won't use anything in the conversions window, but almost every car gets access to at least some engine swaps and then drivetrain swaps. You may also see wide body kits here and aspiration swaps, things like turbos and superchargers. For engine swaps, it's generally best to keep your stock engine if you can, and only swap engines if you're trying to push your car into a class that the stock engine just doesn't have the power for. There are also some cases where an engine swap can lower your PI, so keep an eye out for that if you want to drop a car into a lower class maybe. For drivetrain swaps, rear-wheel drive cars get an all-wheel drive option, all-wheel drive cars get a rear-wheel drive option, and front-wheel drive cars usually get both all-wheel and rear-wheel drive swaps. Like with engine swaps, the default is usually the best. In previous Horizon games, all-wheel drive swaps were pretty powerful, and they still are to a point, but rear and front-wheel drive are much more viable in online racing for Horizon 5, so you usually just don't need to swap, but of course, it's up to you. Next up, some engines get aspiration swaps. If you can meet your power goals without adding a turbo or supercharger, that's usually preferred. NA power is better in Horizon in most cases. However, like with engine swaps, if you need more power or have the PI to spare, this is a great option. Turbos will usually give higher max power, but only higher in the rev range, whereas superchargers give less max power but increase it throughout the whole rev range. Now, if you do have access to a wide body kit, on top of obviously making the car look better, they can actually improve handling quite a bit by improving your track width. Just keep in mind that you probably won't be able to install adjustable front aero with a full body kit. On this build, I'm going to leave the body kit off just for now so I can show off the front adjustable aero, but I will come back here and install it for the final build. 
And that's it for conversions. Again, most of your builds probably won't need anything in here. Generally, if you want a V8, start with a car with a V8. If you want an all-wheel drive car, start with an all-wheel drive car. This is by no means a hard set rule, but it's just general good beginner advice to start with the engine and drivetrain that the car comes with, as a lot of things like weight distribution and suspension values are going to be balanced around the stock car's configuration. Now, let's move over to aero. Most every car gets access to the infamous Forza front splitter and rear wing. The front splitter is usually very expensive, but can be very important on higher class cars say A class and above. Try to build without an adjustable front splitter if you can, but if your builds are just understeering too much and don't have any front grip, it's time to add it. As for adjustable rear arrow, this has some interesting properties as in some cases it can actually lower PI. If it does, throw it on. You can always take away the added downforce in tuning if you notice any issues. A lot of the time, adjustable rear wings will increase PI though, and if so, only add it if you notice significant rear grip issues at speed. You want to try and get away with not using adjustable aero on most builds if you can, but especially on higher class cars, it can be hugely beneficial. Downforce is a beautiful thing. Now, depending on your car, you may also have non-adjustable options, bumpers, side skirts, and the like. These can be great for making little tweaks at the end of your build, because some of them may add or even reduce just one or two PI without making any real change in your car's performance. If you're floating just above the max PI for your class, a slightly heavier body kit might be just what you need to get back into the right class restriction. Now let's move on to tires and rims, and this is kind of the first majorly important window here, starting with tire compounds. If you're running a rally, off-road, or drift build, there's no real reason not to use the corresponding tires. They offer huge benefits. The only exception to this may be in low-class rally builds, where you can sometimes get away with stock tires. Rally tires are focused on mixed surface driving, so if you want a build for off-road, use off-road tires. These aren't just for trucks and cross-country racing, they make a great rally tire, as long as you aren't on paved surfaces too much. Now for road racing, there are street, sport, semi-slick, and slick race tires. Depending on your car's stock configuration, you may not see all of these because the stock tires are already better than the street or sport, for example. Tire upgrades aren't as expensive as they were in Horizon 4, but they also aren't quite as valuable. On all-wheel drive builds, you can usually get away with the stock tire compound as long as you aren't upgrading your power too much. For rear and front-wheel drive, at least one compound upgrade is usually pretty helpful and worth the cost. Slick race tires are almost never worth it for online racing builds. These are better suited for rivals racing. So if you do need to upgrade to race tires, semi-slicks are a bit cheaper and much better if you find yourself racing in the rain or dipping off road for a second. Now for tire widths, front tire width will generally be somewhat costly, but very worth it if you find yourself understeering. Definitely upgrade this on your front wheel drive builds if you can. Rear tire width on front and all wheel drive builds usually won't increase PI much. It could even decrease it as it adds some weight. And on rear wheel drive builds, wider rear tires add a ton of grip, often at the expense of more PI cost though. Either way, I pretty much always find it worth it to max upgrade rear tire width on any build. For your rim style, different rims have different weights, and as such, can tweak your PI a bit. Like with the non-adjustable arrow, use wheel weights to dial in your final PI. A heavier rim is often worth it if it means you can fit that one extra power upgrade. Now for rim size and wheel spacing, bigger rims can help your car feel more responsive without costing much or any PI, and wheel spacing is another cheap upgrade that helps handling and grip quite noticeably. On rear wheel drive builds though, it can be helpful to leave the front spacing stock and only space out the rear. This will give more rear grip and stability. You can use wheel spacing options to dial in your oversteer understeer balance without really affecting your PI cost much. More rear spacing versus front gives a little bit more stability and understeer. More front spacing versus rear will give your car a more darty, oversteery feeling. Sometimes though, having your front track width be a lot wider than your rear can mess up your suspension a bit. 
so use that sparingly. Now, let's jump over to our next category, drivetrain. Starting with the clutch, this upgrade gets less valuable if you're using the manual with clutch setting, but on manual clutchless and especially auto, this can be a great upgrade, especially on older, slower cars. Pay attention to the shift time change when upgrading this. For transmissions, sport transmission is the way to go almost always. It's cheap and lets you adjust final drive, which is the most important tuning setting for transmissions in most cases. Only upgrade to the race transmissions if you need the extra gears or have the PI to spare and want to tweak your actual individual gearing ratios. Moving forward, your driveline is another great place to make some of those final PI tweaks. It'll drop weight and help you rev a bit faster and usually costs barely any PI. Now for differentials, we get a freebie. Upgraded diffs don't cost a thing, and unlock differential tuning. The sport diff is kinda useless in most builds. Just go for race or rally for rally and off-road builds. Only use the off-road diff for fully dedicated off-road builds like dune jumpers and rock climbers and stuff. Now platform and handling, starting with brakes. Usually a pretty valuable and worthwhile upgrade. I almost always take the race brakes on my builds. It's expensive, but worth it. We have the same situation with suspension. I always try to fit race, or rally, suspension when I can. Not only does it vastly improve the car's handling as is, it also unlocks tons of tuning settings we can then adjust. For front and rear ARBs, these generally are free or only cost a couple PI. They also unlock ARB tuning, which is a very important tuning setting. No reason not to throw these on your builds. Next up, roll cages and chassis reinforcement. It's generally preferred to not run the full roll cage, even if it drops PI, which in some cases it will, it adds a good bit of weight and the handling improvements are negligible unless you're taking a really old low class car and throwing a ton of power at it. It is often worth it to throw on one of the lesser chassis reinforcements though. As a general rule, for each class you increase your car over the stock class, add one level of chassis reinforcement. So B to A, street upgrade. B to S1, sport upgrade. And if you're going from B all the way up to S2, throw on the full cage. And now for weight reduction. This can be one of the most expensive upgrades and for good reason. Here, you need to decide if you're going to go for more power or less weight. Forza prefers min-maxing in this case. It usually doesn't reward you as much for taking only some weight reduction and adding some power. If your PI budget is reaching its cap, either go all out for the most weight reduction you can or skip it outright and add as much power as you can. Your car will handle much better with the max weight reduction, but going for power builds is usually favored in online racing. I'll leave the choice up to you, but I'm a weight reduction kind of guy. As the saying goes, adding power makes you faster on the straights, subtracting weight makes you faster everywhere. And with that, we get to our final and most fun category, engine upgrades. If you've already added what you need from the rest of the windows, this is where you spend the rest of your PI budget, and that's why I save it for last. It's best to focus first on unlocking the tuning upgrades and getting your tires and suspension in order, and then filling out the rest of your build with power. I find intake and exhaust upgrades to be highly valuable. Then, oil and cooling, which is usually pretty cheap because it adds some weight. If your car has a turbo or supercharger, the intercooler upgrades are pretty worth it and pretty cheap as well because they also add weight. If the car is supercharged, upgrading the supercharger can be pretty helpful and add good power, but on turbo cars, I'll save turbo upgrades for last. I generally save displacement upgrades for last too, if I just have the extra budget. Cams are a great upgrade that increase your red line, but they usually cost too much to be worth it. The other upgrades, fuel, ignition, and compression, are good to fill out a bit more power if you have the budget. And then finally, the flywheel is another great little tweaking tool if you come up just shy of your PI maximum. It helps your engine revs feel a bit more snappy and responsive and only costs a couple of PI, or sometimes none at all, depending on how much it's upgraded. 
If you've reached this point and hit your max possible PI for your class, it can still be worth it to go back and check a few of the other upgrades like rims, tire widths, or drive lines to see if you can maybe just squeeze a little bit more upgrading out of the car without increasing its PI at all. You can see with this car, I was able to upgrade my drive shaft without it costing any PI. And with that, you've got a build. To summarize this all, Focus your builds on first unlocking tuning options and getting the right tires, suspension, and transmission setup. Then, if you have plenty of PI to spare before reaching your max in the class, it's great to upgrade things like brakes and clutch or possibly adjustable aero if needed. And then finally, spend the rest of your PI on either reducing weight with things like light rims, drive lines, and the actual weight reduction upgrades, or focus on adding power to the engine. And there you have it. Hopefully this helps you understand what to focus on and prioritize when building your cars for online in Horizon 5. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.